Nimbula, mezangu nimi lote na isaro tumboa. Na mkia umi narua kinaona na vekavi muniti kina vaka rambuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vipo kwa baro takini ndreko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na wongani vya niano. Ngai na mkia ukina. आपकी शादी होने वाली है पांच पांच बच्चे होंगे पांच 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 हाय मैं हूँ आपकी सहेली वेनु सुनते रहिए मिर्च एफएम मैं हूँ ना नौ से बारह बजे तक Tonight, another bus catches fire, passengers escape unharmed. Casino project delayed by more than a year. And pay rise for Ports Fiji workers. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. Fifteen passengers on board an Assese bus to Suva are lucky to be alive after the bus they were in caught fire this morning. As Roland Karoy reports, this is the second bus fire in less than a month. This is what's left of this Nasese bus in Langere, Nasino. Travelling from Suva to Nausori, the driver claims to have seen sparks from wires which had been installed for an e-ticketing console. I saw it started from the wire. Okay. okay. Uh, so I tried my best to stop the fire, but it could not stop. This passenger refused to come on camera, but claims he too saw the sparks from the wirings. From the driver's account of what followed, it may have been his quick action that saved lives. Then I just park on the side, we call the passengers out, and uh, put the fire shoots up. But it didn't uh, get off. Vodafone manager Corporate Affairs Shalin Prasad told FBC News they received confirmation that there weren't any e-ticketing machines in the bus. When contacted this afternoon, Nasese Bus Company Limited manager Amit Chan told FBC News there weren't any machines, but there were already wirings for the consoles, which may have started the fire. Whatever the cause, authorities now have their work cut out for them, this being the second fire in just three weeks. And that being said, it may be time to ask now, how safe is it to travel by bus? Roland Koroi, FBC News. Meanwhile, the Fiji Bus Operators Association have expressed concern at the recent incidents involving bus fires. In a statement this afternoon, Association Vice President Richard Lal said passenger safety remains paramount for bus operators and the buses catching fire are as much a worry for them as it is for the public. He says they're baffled by this cluster of bus fires and are looking to the outcome of investigations to provide answers. Lal goes on to say that passenger safety will not be compromised at any cost. The developers of the $290 million casino now hope to complete construction by October next year. 100 Sands Limited is also ready to pay a fine of $100,000 U.S. to the government for every month from October this year until the casino is built. Christopher Chandra explains. Construction delayed by a year, developer Larry Clonch has spoken for the first time since a series of deadlines were issued by the government. Only last month, there were some signs of progress at this new site. Yes, it took longer to get it going than we wanted to. Yes, we switched locations to a beautiful location just right outside of the gates of dinner house. So I, I'm pleased with everything. I think the, the struggle has been the, the time that it's taken. The construction is well behind schedule. It was supposed to open in October this year. After a groundbreaking ceremony in April last year, the project has struggled to get off its feet. We got close to getting the, the original funding uh, out of the U.S. that we planned on from the beginning. There was some things said internally in Fiji by some key people that shouldn't have said what they said. And it really hurt us badly. This is the new location. Following initial landscaping, plans are to start building soon. Well, the Casino Convention Center is going to take uh, between 12 and 15 months, starting from now. The dirt work starts now, the pilings will go next, and then within 90 days, 120 days, then we'll have uh, stuff standing in the air, and then I think that everybody will be happy then. <laughs> 
Clonch tells us he has overcome all problems now and is steaming ahead to finish Fiji's first casino. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Permanent staff of Ports Fiji Corporation Limited and its subsidiary Ports Terminal Limited will receive a pay rise as early as next week. Acting Chairman Commander Choweli Thawaki told FBC News the management has been instructed to implement the increment as soon as possible. About 170 staff are being awarded a 2% pay rise backdated to 1st January 2012. Thawaki says this should be reflected in the next pay. Ports Fiji recorded a net profit of $7.3 million for the year 2012. Vodafone Fiji is confident of forging a name in the PNG market with management rights to be mobile in Papua New Guinea. The mobile communications giant is using Fijian expertise to build a company. And as Chanel Sivan reports, opportunities abound. So would you be able to advise me where this is? Only three months into the PNG market and Vodafone Fiji is already showing signs of progress. The PNG market currently is underpenetrated in terms of mobile. I think the mobile penetration there is around 34-35%. Um, and it's a big market. It's a huge market. In fact, it's a bigger market than New Zealand. So the opportunities there are uh, uh, plentiful. Uh, for a second operator. The Fiji National Provident Fund holds 40% shares in B-Mobile and has given Vodafone Fiji the rights to manage the PNG-based mobile company. Given its success in Fiji for the last 19 years, the company is confident its Fijian manpower has what it takes to tackle a market the size of PNG. We at, at Vodafone obviously have a very good management team and uh, having seen that uh, capability in the Vodafone management team, the shareholders, uh, which is FNPF, and uh, obviously stakeholders out of, um, out of uh, PNG, have seen it fit to hire the Vodafone management to lead the team. And we are now obviously getting uh, ready to, to make an impact in that market. There are some staff uh, you know, engagements in this early stage, but uh, things should uh, become much clearer in the next uh, couple of months. In Fiji, the company says they will have lots of promotions this month to mark their 19th birthday. The company says there will be lots of promotions for their customers. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. The People's Democratic Party has declared its assets as required under the political party's registration decree 2013. Published in today's Fiji Sun newspaper, the party has also listed its office bearers. Leading the party as president is former parliamentarian Andi Sivian Goro. Assistant, assisting Goro as vice president is Jacob Etika. Other applicant is Vijay Singh, who is the party's treasurer. A letter from former minister Posedim Bune, also published in today's Fiji Sun, informs the party president that due to personal circumstances, he isn't able to effectively serve the party and is therefore stepping down. He assures the party, however, that his support for the PDP remains undiminished. Bune was the party's interim general secretary. His successor is Satnarayan. Preparations are underway in the Solomon Islands capital of Honiara for the country's 35th Independence Day celebrations. A contingent from both the Fijian and so Solomon Islands mil military and police performed their first parade rehearsal at the Lawson Thomas Stadium today. Fiji's counsel to the Solomon Islands, Atunai Sambalekana, told FBC News this is a historical event for all Fijians in the Solomons. Programs have been set up for the contingent from Fiji to help rebuild lives and work in partnership with the Solomon community. Fiji's defense forces worked with their local counterparts to build a seawall at the capital's market. Minister for Foreign Affairs Ratui Noke Kumbombola is expected to be in the country this afternoon, while the Prime Minister's entourage will arrive tomorrow. After the break, experts found to repair government building clock. Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, i got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach knockoff time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on The Ride, only on Gold FM. Hola, 
I'm DJ Toro. Join me every Monday to Thursday, 7 until midnight. The Premium Classics on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. 17 justices of the peace and 11 commissioners of oath were sworn in at the Suva High Court today. This brings to 307 the number of JPs in the country. Roland Caroy reports. It was a packed courtroom this morning with family and friends witnessing the swearing in. And Chief Justice Anthony Gates was quick to remind those sworn in of their duty. You must not charge for your services. You come forward in order to serve the public. This is not a business venture. You're not out to make a sideline profit. Be careful not to wrap up other office facilities or services for which you may rightly charge with your services as a JP or a commissioner. Two women were among those who took an oath to serve the public. I'm feeling very confident, very happy and very grateful for the Lord. The same sentiments were shared by a couple from Singatoka. It's pretty good for me to I can serve in my community and help those people who come to me, so it's, it's great. Yes, this is a proud moment and I'm, it's a privilege to be here and taking part in the ceremony with him. For the first time also, there will be a commissioner of oath for Senganga in Vanua Levu. It is great for me that I will be serving the community there because they, are really, they don't, do not have one commission of oaths in Sangha districts and it will be a great opportunity for the people around there to have this service available. For the men and women that have been sworn in here today, it's a joyous occasion not just for them but for their families. That's not to say that they know too well the duty that awaits them. Roland Koroi, FBC News. An English company, Cambrian Clock, has been hired to repair the clock on the government building. It's the same company from which the Fiji government bought the clock in 1938. Seen as a vital part of Fiji's colonial history, the clock has over the years become somewhat unreliable when it comes to keeping time. However, Chief Justice Anthony Gates today confirmed that the original clockmakers will now look into the problem. Once again, the inhabitants of Suva, the capital, will be able to set their clocks and order their days in obedience to its chimes. The Cumbria Clock Company still has its small factory in rural England. The clock repairs part of a general upgrade of government building. A 19-year-old Englishman with a love for music is in Fiji, spreading his passion for the piano. Finn Shields is holding a recital in Suva this evening, hoping to inspire local youth to take up music. Vosita Kote Wasawasa met with the talented pianist. Finn Shields started playing the piano when he was just 11 years old. Now he wants the world to play with him. With my concert tonight, I'm introducing the piano as much as I'm introducing myself. I'm kind of arranging the program that way. So it's an introduction for music on the piano as an instrument rather than just me as the player. The teenager plays mainly classical numbers and will tonight display a composition he put together himself. At an age when his peers are more interested in video games, mobile phones and partying, Shields believes there is more to life. Enjoy music. Don't be intimidated by people that are better than you. Just, just play it for, your, for yourself, really, if you can enjoy it. and I think that's all that matters. The young man's been here for the past two months, visiting family. Now he'll be coming back to help Fijians learn the piano. He leaves for England tomorrow after the recital at the Fiji Arts Club in Suva tonight. Wasita Kotiwaswasa, FBC News. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation is mourning the loss of one of its renowned and well-loved broadcasters, Leon Vuki. Vuki passed away suddenly yesterday morning. He was a producer and presenter on the Ethel K station Radio Fiji One for the past 15 years. Due to his commitment to Radio Fiji One, he was nominated to represent FBC at various international and regional workshops, the latest in Beijing, China. Vuki was also an award-winning producer, last year picking up C-Web's Ocean Journalism Award for the radio category. Vuki is survived by his wife. Partygoers and revelers out in the nightclubs during weekends are becoming a nuisance for people on the streets. Police have received reports of dozens of people being harassed by drunkards. Akusita Tale with this report. 
The Fiji Police Force says Thursdays through to the weekends there is an increase in reports of unruly behavior. People complain of being bullied, harassed and made fun of in public by others who've been drinking. And what they'll be doing is they're beefing up manpower because to increase uh, visibility around the, uh, uh, the um, red spot areas that we might find. Um, and uh, therefore then, like I said, we, might, we are trying to increase visibility so people know the police presence is there. Officers will be on the beat from 6.30 in the evening and nightly crime reports will decide where manpower will be deployed. That's why we have our uh, morning briefings where we uh, um, contact all our divisional heads and also the uh, commanding officer for the central division. Uh, then we review what's happened within the last 24 hours and then we, then we um, also uh, plan ahead for the next 24 or 48 hours. Naisoro says anyone who's harassed should come to the police as this helps the force keep the streets clean. We had taken people in. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we had uh, issued them a warning, uh, for example. But if people come across such cases, we do encourage them to come to the police station and report. Police force says they are committed to ensuring the safety of life and property and police visibility will be beefed up during major events. Akusi Tatale, FBC News. We turn to sports now. Jamie, what do you have for us today? Well, coming up, the FRU board is dusting off some old plans to make some money for the sport. And the Digicel Cup resumes tomorrow with Suba taking on Naita Siri. Details after the break. I wake up in the morning, I prefer to go down to the gym, get a bit of physical work done. Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are. A bit of research. And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam. Every weekday from 3 o'clock to 7, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up? Suraj ki pahili kiran ke saath din ki shuruat ki jiye. Subha ka mangal prabhat aap ko shubh ho. Subha subha ho khushiyo ka mela. ना लोगों की परवाह ना दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो पर हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ वेलकम बैक टू स्पोर्ट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ द नाइट मनी or should I say the lack of it is a problem that's been associated with the Fiji Rugby Union for far too long. The newly elected board, like many others before it, have been tasked to dig rugby house out of the doldrums. The difference this time is the expertise which has been brought in has the means to deliver. Elena McDonald has more. Empty coffers have haunted rugby house for years. Those at the helm have no problem admitting it. We don't have any money, so we have to be strategic in how we approach this thing. Uh, approach those that have the money, but the benefit will come back to the people of this uh, nation. So those are some of the talks that we are doing right now. Of the many proposed plans to bring in revenue, there is one that has existed for over a decade. See this? Now picture a 10-story office building in its place. We can put up a structure here which not, not only caters for commercial offices, but also accommodation, uh, car parking and all those other issues. With Fiji's performance only just starting to improve, building partnerships with the right people is all the new board can do for now. This in the pipeline, it's about this property. We know the location, uh, we know the uh, opportunities that can come out uh, of this uh, particular spot if we put in uh, proper uh, structures. So the scale of Fiji rugby's success will depend on how its financial position improves and a makeover for Rugby House seems just the ticket. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. The Suva rugby team faces the might of Naita Siri tomorrow in the Digital Cup competition, and history has shown that the Hillmen have a tendency to pick up their game against the capital side. Shelvin Chan spoke to the Suva camp. The Cell Cup competition is back after pause to allow international games. For the Silver coach, the break was a welcome reprieve. Uh, they sort of bring the boys down to it. Eh? Yeah. You know, we learned in uh, the, the game against Lotoka. You know? 
coming high up and the boys now they are they are back to their own place, back to their clubs and out from their clubs now and in into the provincial. Ready for the good game against Litasir. The capital side goes into all this important game minus two key players. To our skipper Il Thomas Nawal, who was uh niggling injury. And uh Manasa Solo. The Suva coach knows that neither Siri will walk onto the pitch at the ANZ Stadium in Suva prepared for a tough encounter. Even though they are not consistent, but when they come against Suva, it's a different Italian team. And with uh, the new coach and uh, Selosini Tank, he knows uh, the Suva team. You know, he knows it well. He's a very good coach, drilling the young boys in some of the older players there. So it will be a hard game for us on Saturday. Suva have been hard at training here at Albert Park, improving and perfecting their set pieces. They hope to counter the series free-flowing game with their structured style. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. The FBC is looking to develop local sports and has signed a two-year deal as the exclusive broadcaster of rugby league games. Tale Ndauda Kadaka with more. As the Rugby League World Cup looms closer, Fiji National Rugby League has received a boost today. FBC TV has come on board to provide coverage of local rugby league competitions. Uh, on the eve of uh, as we prepare our local players to go to the World Cup, that we are uh, having this agreement uh, not only for the World Cup, but also to promote our local players uh, domestically and also internationally. No doubt this is a step forward for the game. Teams and individual players are now able to derive a number of advantages from this deal. And just for FBC, this is something that's very important to us because we truly uh, see this as something that um, we, we want to really develop in Fiji. Uh, it's something we'd love to see more schools get involved in. Um, it's something we'd love to see um, more scouts as well coming from overseas to, to see our talent. A noble move to spread the game of rugby league across the country and hopefully generate more interest in the sport. Chalindo the Kadaka, FBC Sports. Fiji dropped nine places in the latest FIFA World Rankings to 191st out of 207 countries. This is the lowest ranking ever for Fiji and most of it is attributed to a lack of international matches. In Oceania, Fiji is ranked 8th. Even Tonga and Samoa, who are known to be minnows when compared to Fiji, are better placed. New Zealand tops in the region, with New Caledonia and Tahiti lagging behind. Meanwhile, Spain, Germany and Colombia are the top three in the world. And on that disappointing note, let's hope the weekend has something better for us. Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority has warned that people importing goods and selling them on social networks need to declare the goods to customs. Locals have been found to be bringing in goods and declaring them as personal effects. However, latest surveillance revealed the same items being sold on the internet. Under Section 137 of the Customs Act, failure to declare goods is a crime, and people can also be charged with intending to defraud. Customs officers in Nandi came across a recent case. The person had declared the goods to be personal effects, but persistent questioning led her to admit that they were for sale. Time for weather now, and Jen, I know what you must be thinking right now. Yes, Jackie, I'm so excited because I get to say TGIF. And not only is it Friday, but we also had excellent weather conditions around the country. As you can see on our map, aside from some rain in the afternoon for two major centers, it was sunshine all the way. Jumping over the temperatures now, and our chart here tells us that Savo Savo was on 28 degrees, while Lombasa was on 32. So, both the day's lowest and highest temperatures are from the north. And the weekend looks promising. Yes, it's likely that we'll have some rain tomorrow, but we're also set to have periods of fine weather. Segrin Pile from Balata Tavua got this unique moment on camera. And I'm not just talking about the surroundings here. If you look a bit closer, you'll notice this rather long cloud streak just above the hills. 
That's it. Thanks everyone for the awesome company. Stay safe, stay smiling, and catch me again on Monday. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. And the headlines once again, Nasese bus owners blame wiring for e-ticketing console after a fire in Nasino. Fiji's first ever casino, now to be ready in October next year, a year later than expected. And Vodafone Fiji uses local expert to build B-Mobile in PNG. The poll question now when we ask, should Fiji develop more relationships with other non-aligned countries apart from Russia? Visit our FBC website www.fbc.com.fj to answer. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's your Friday night news. I'll be back again on Monday. Until then, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night. Isambul binaka. Pedang gawat di sini dalai. Nama kita mana yang masih dengan orang orang kita lalui negabi. Mana tolu kita bintu. Ena moni dengan apa rombuka. Ena bula FM. Naban dua ena seri. जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू वो है आपका अपना घर संसार ज्वाइन मी ऑन घर संसार मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन एम टिल ट्वेल्व पी एम ओनली ऑन रेडियो फीजी टू